Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content and featuring a very unique Pokemon that we've not played here on the channel before. Uh, but it is, as you can see on your screen, Octazolt. It was one of the fossil Pokemon that was introduced with Sword and Shield. And uh, the main reason for kind of using it is because it does get the hidden ability Slush Rush, which doubles its speed as long as the hail is on the field. Now, we do have a hail user within Nine Tails, a lot of Nine Tails, uh, and it can provide a lot of support obviously with Aurora Veil and some other cheeky techs that we've got on there that we'll get on to later on in the team. Rest of the supporting cast is going to be made up of Incineroar, Tapu Fini, obviously kind of staples in this format, give us the terrain, give us Intimidate support, and give us nice switches as well, especially for that Arctos ult. Uh, then we've got Stack Attacker. It is primarily going to be our Trick Room kind of Pokemon, kind of counteract Trick Room if we want, or set it up, or reverse it, whatever. Uh, Stack Attacker does pretty well, and it does decently well against most of the fire threats in the format that are going to give Octosalt a little bit of an issue, so, so to speak. And then we're running off the team with Dragapult, one of the fastest offensive Pokemon in the format. And it pairs up nicely with that Alolan Ninetales as well, because we do have the weakness policy on it there. So it gives us really fast offensive option if we need it, especially with the Ice Shard from Alolan Ninetales. As always, the poker pace is down in the description. We'll have a couple of games with the team now. Hopefully it's a lot of fun. And we'll wrap up with the rental code at the end of the episode so hope you enjoyed today's episode let me know if you've been trying out Ogdesalt though because it is an interesting pokemon especially with that slush rush but without further ado friends let's get into our first match of today okay up first we've got z playing a team of uh, what is it pinchurchin <laughs> regieleki lapras incineroar urshifu and whimsicott want to say pukumuku there but it's not it's not quite the same but pinchurchin gonna bring the terrain obviously helping out the regieleki giving a, a really fast offensive kind of mod to the team but they do have lapras as well um, and the one thing that the terrain and Octazolt probably like to see is that terrain obviously electric terrain and the lapras which you can do a lot of work against um We've got to watch out for Tailwind on the Whimsicott. It is going to be able to kind of get the Tailwind up pretty freely. We could lead Incineroar to kind of get around that fake out pressure there. The Intimidate is going to be nice against something like in, uh, the, the Urshifu. Uh, mitigates the kind of uh, Incineroar lead from my opponent as well. It gives us a nice pivot out onto the Lapras. Um, I kind of, yeah, you know, Incineroar makes a lot of sense uh, here. Uh, we could go Octazolt as well. The only problem is with leading Octazolt is that I feel like uh, Incineroar will come out and it can cause us a few issues, but uh, we'll go with it anyway. We'll bring Ninetales as, as well. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll lead Ninetales. I'm going to bring Incineroar on the back. I think it's a better switch in general. And then we will go with Tapu Fini, which I feel probably gives us a, a nice way to change the terrain if we need it. And it gives us a good switch into things like Lapras and also the Urshifu as well. So let's see how we get on this first one. Hopefully it's a good one because, you know, I was thinking about putting the Octos all team together and I was like, is it going to work? Can it work? We need it to work for the video, for obviously for the episode. And if it does, obviously, then it's great because you guys can go and have fun on the ladder with it and hopefully it inspires some ideas and things like that. But we've got to get through this Lapras first, which seems like on first appearance, leading with the Whimsicott, you've got the Tailwind there. It appears as though it will be Tailwind and a very offensive Lapras, um, probably Life Orb. So it's going to be able to get its Aurora Veil up, but we're going to be able to get our Aurora Veil up as well. And we can also go for Imex Lightning, uh, which might not be a bad idea, turn one, because I don't feel super threatened by the the, uh, the Lapras here. The only issue would be if we went for Aurora Veil and um, they go for the, the Geyser, the big Geyser, which would stop us being able to uh, to get our Veil up. I'm going to try and get it up. I'm going to hope they go for the Resonance turn one. Oh, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what they go for. I mean, going for the Resonance turn one makes a lot of sense, but against two Ice types, unless they're mistakenly thinking that Octazolt is a dragon type, which, you know, you could easily mistake it for, I guess. I've done it myself, so I can't blame anyone else that does. And in this situation, it would work out pretty well for us. But we'll see how much this bolt beak does. We've got the life orb on um, on Octazolt, so we should be doing some good damage. Getting that electric train up now is always going to be useful, especially for that next turn, you know. 
Right, well, let's see. It's going to be Lapras, going to be the Gigantamax Pokemon, which makes, you know, all the sense in the world here. Um, it's weird as well, because we like Wimmy, Lapras isn't a combination that we've seen. I don't like that. I personally haven't seen for a long time. So um, it's quite nice to kind of see it back in action. I do like the combination a lot. The fast defensive Lapras is always quite threatening. There is the Tailwind. Let's see what it's going to go for. The guys are here. <laughs> yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I'm going after the Nine Tails as well. Yeah, just to waste our Aurora Veil. Uh, ooh, do I mind us going for that? No, not particularly. Because we're going to be able to. You can see the Life Orb there, so it's fine. Our Aurora Veil does fail. Uh, but our Shivering Octo's Alt is going to be able to do some massive damage so that's good and what we could do the next turn is mm, do we just save the weather for later maybe it's a difficult one because do I go after the Lapras here because they're going to go at resonance for sure it's whether or not I go max hailstorm into um, the Wimmy or not but I still have to switch. I think, yeah. I think what we'll do is we just go after... I'm not too worried about the Wimmy here. I want to get rid of the Wimmy the next turn, I think. So we'll go after the Lapras and we will switch into... Let's switch into Finny because I don't want them to go for another Geyser and Incineroar get caught out by that. And I think Intimidate and Fake Out will be more useful late game with knowing what they've got in the back. You know, things like Urshifu and stuff like that. And we can... Make sure that we get rid of the Whimsicott the next turn anyway, regardless of what happens. And they go for the Max Guard. Okay. Should have went for it this turn. Never mind. Never mind. What's this Wimmy going to do then? Energy Ball. Okay. Well, the, uh, the old um, Incineroar switch there would have been the better one, but you can't always rely on Whimsicott not having Energy Ball. I think what we've got to do here is go after the Whimsicott because we don't want another Tailwind going up. That's the big, big, big thing for us. Now we could go for uh, a Calm Mind. Could go for a Calm Mind. Or we could just go for a Moonblast. They're going to go for a Resonance, whatever. So I think, yeah, they go for the Resonance. They have to go for it this turn. They could go for Thunder, but it doesn't really help them out a massive amount. I think at this point in time, it's better for us if we just get rid of the Whimsicott, get rid of the Tailwind, and then we can utilize the Slush Rush later on in this in this game. We are going to see a Switcheroo, which is not ideal. Is that going to be an Eject Button? A Lagging Tail onto Finny. Okay, I mean, out of everything, that's like way better, because the one, I, I think it's a little bit of a misplay for my opponent. Can, you kind of want to take the Life Orb off the Arc Result and you definitely want to uh, to give it the, the lag and tail, so then the slush rush isn't really an issue anymore. Um, Tapu Fini with it doesn't really matter too much, uh, to be honest, and we'll get the max hailstorm into this Wimmy. I'll take it down to its sash, which we know it actually doesn't have anymore, so it's just going to be a clean kill. So it's a bit, yeah, it's not ideal, but I mean, we're still in a decent spot this next turn. With the tailwind running out, we've still got um, nine tails in the back if the weather does change. Although, you know, we've just set it up for ourselves. So we've got that slush rush going. They have got the resonance up. So we've got to keep that in mind for this next turn. Or the next five, you would say. Because they have got the life orb. So um, I think we'll be... Well, at the minute, you can't say. It's still pretty early on in the game. But I feel good about the position that we're in right now. Especially with Regilecki coming onto the field. Is that their tailwind ran out? It should have done. The one problem is we won't outspeed Regilecki um, with Octo's ult. That's the only issue. So, let's see. Oh, they've got one turn of Tailwind left. Okay. Well, we can just go Stomp and Tantrum. Um, and I think we just protect the Finny here. Be interesting to see what this Lapras decides to do. Does it go after Octo's ult? Because the Regilecki is not really going to be able to touch the Octo's, Octo's ult. It's such a, a mouthful as well of a Pokemon, you know? At least I think it is. Um, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see what my opponent is deciding to do here. Like, what have they got in the back as well? They must have... I think they've probably got Urshifu. That'd be my bet. But 
Can't tell. I don't, I'm going to be surprised if they just let us take the, the Aleki down here, though. Going for the Thunderbolt. Ah, oh, they're going for the double up. Okay, well, that makes sense. The Blizzard. The Blizzard. Can we take it, though? That's the thing. The Life Orb will take down the Lapras. We just need one hit. Okay. Yeah, the Lapras gone. We do take the double up. Finny could have attacked here, but we were too we were too scared to go for the attack. Octazolt, wow, not even getting close to a knockout onto the, the Regieleki, which is uh okay. The resonance there, that's the why that's the reason why the resonance I'm still surprised though, you know. With a life orb we should be doing more it's super effective, and the last Pokemon is Incineroar, which yeah, makes me way more reliant on protecting this Finny to deal with the Incineroar here. Um, okay, let's protect. Let's... Do we just sack nine? I think we just sack nine tails now. Um, yeah. Let's just sack nine tails. We just need to pretty much get rid of this Aleki, which we could potentially do with, with our own Incineroar. Um, the Intimidate's not great onto Octazolt, especially with the Resonance up. Uh, we do see the Faker come into that slot, and we'll probably see a Thunderbolt yeah, into the Nine Tails, which then gives us the free switch into it, our own Incineroar here. So we've got the option then to go maybe Bald Beak into the opposing Incineroar, um, and maybe double up into the Incineroar this next turn, you know? With a fake out into it. Unless the Regieleki's like specs. Potentially could be. Should we just play it safer? The, the safest option here is just to go for a fake out into the Regieleki and then just attack into Incineroar. Um, probably Bald Beak's our best option here. And then just fake out, I think, yeah. Just in case it is specs, because you can never you never know, do you? It is gonna pull the protect out, but it, you know, the other option is we, we go for the fake out and then the double up into the incineral and we still have Octazolt the next turn, which definitely would help us out, but see how much this does. It's a decent amount. It's a decent amount. Now we will use Octazolt, but we're gonna be in a good spot to um okay, the flare blitz coming out, which is fine. Take that pretty comfortably. <sighs> okay. And there's the citrus berry. Okay. Like we're in no like all we need to do is protect Finny, and then we go after the, the Reggie Regieleki, and it's kind of done. Like I don't feel like Regieleki's gonna be able to take down Incineroar this next turn. Uh, especially with the figgy berry here. Like the even the double up from the Incineroar and the Aleki probably isn't gonna be enough. The only issue is with the uh, the type of Finny is we've got the lagging tail, so it's gonna it's gonna be, well depends what the the Incineroar's got. If it's got something like Snarl, we could it could see this drag out a little bit more. Obviously, with the leftovers that we had on there, they were definitely more useful in this sort of situation. But we haven't got it. We're just gonna lock into that Flare Blitz, and we'll see. Hopefully, this should be should be enough to get rid of the Aleki. Um, and the Incineroar kind of still sticks around. On our side of the field, at least. Obviously, the Citrus Berry on my opponent's Incineroar making things a little bit tricky. Still a bit confused as to um, with the lag until we just about take it. And we get the, yeah, we'll get the Flare Blitz. And I think this might just tick us over into our Figgy, but maybe. Can we take three HP damage? We do. And it procs the berry, so there we go, that's perfect for us. Um, and it's going to be Flare Blitz versus Flare Blitz and uh, Muddy Water, which we've got, which definitely helps us out. And them going for a Flare Blitz as well, which is which is fine. Um, just makes the recall a little bit easier for us to manage the opposing Incineroar as the hill does stop. And uh, we'll be able to wrap this one up. And Octazolt coming out on top after this first one, which is good. Um, yeah, I'm still a little confused with the lagging tail, of course. I think um, going and switching it with the Octazolt would have made a bit more sense than the type of Finny, but it, then again, taking the leftovers off the Finny is always a good thing, you know? So a very good game to my opponent and nice one for us to kick off with today. And we'll jump straight into a second 
game of today's episode. Okay, up next we've got an Urshifu, a Colossal, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Reggie, Aleki, and Glastria team. So you can pretty much bank on it being a GMAX Colossal team. You've got probably the Rapid Strike Urshifu there. A good support and cast, the regulars in Incineroar with the Intimidate, obviously fake out support pivot support uh good switch in for glastria as well and then you've got the rillaboom as well which helps deal with those pesky water types uh regieleki just going to be a fast offensive pokemon that you can utilize to use a speed control uh with electro web and just be a very fast offensive kind of threat um <laughs> and then glastria kind of rounding off the team the ice core doesn't feel so great here although no, the ice core doesn't doesn't not does not feel great as a lead because the colossal just absolutely eats us for breakfast, um, and there's not really any way. I mean, we could lead we could lead Incineroar, Ogdazolt, and then have Nine Tails in the back, and then have like Tapu Fini, and that might work. But are we leaving ourselves short anywhere? I mean, I could I can see that working. So I think. Because this is all about Arctozolt, I think that's what we do here. The problem would be is if we kind of commit early on to Dynamax and Arctozolt too early on, um, and they lead with Urshifu, and they just protect turn one, and we max, and then we're in a terrible position, turn two, where they've got the easy Aqua Jet max, steam engine, weakness policy, and things go downhill very quickly from there why you kind of want to tend to lead with like Tapu Fini in these sort of matchups but as you can see from my opponent's lead potentially why they're not leading with um that that pairing because uh Tapu Fini is kind of the obvious thing that we would lead um and they're leading to kind of counteract that which makes a lot of sense seeing the Glastria and the Reggie Alecki come out for my opponent now we could hmm. Are they going to max the Glastria? I don't know. I mean, we've got to be very wary about a max Quake for sure. That's something that we can't really get away from. Um, and do they just switch the Regieleki out? I mean, what do they bring in for it? I mean, probably Incineral, right? <laughs> we could make some... Uh... Do we go for the max and just start throwing damage down to the board? I mean, Max Quake's going to be good. I think we go for it. We'll just go for it. Even though I could see Incineroar from my opponent coming in. They're still going to take a lot of damage, you know. From, you know, they're probably going to Volt Switch out. We'll see the Incineroar come in. But the Incineroar still, even at minus one, going to take a lot of damage from the, the Max Quake from Arc Result. And it might put us in a position where we're going to be able to pick up the knockout onto it the next turn. And if you think that the Incineroar is probably coming in there, it's unlikely that we see Colossal. As my opponent's kind of main option so let's see regieleki just protecting okay so this kind of working out all right for us up to this point uh and glastria is protecting as well okay double protect just burning turns of our, our max uh, and preventing us from getting that parting shot off which isn't ideal but the special defense boost is is really useful for us um because i think the next turn what we do i don't know if we go for oh, I don't know if we go for the um, the Quake again. I mean, we could go for the Quake again. It's just it's more likely that my opponent pulls. Yeah. Do we go for the Bolt Beak? Uh, the only thing that the Bolt Beak wouldn't be good against would be uh, the Rillaboom. But the Bolt Beak will, like the Max Lightning, will get Regieleki for sure here. Uh, it gets our terrain up as well. And then with the terrain up, we don't need to worry about the uh, the the, the Regieleki being on the field. Colossal, okay. Ooh. Not what we want to see. But the parting shot there is really useful. I'm going to be like super useful as we see uh, Volt Switch come out. <sighs> come on, be Urshifu, be Urshifu, please. Because then we can switch into Ninetales and we can get rid of the Urshifu super quick. Uh, especially if the Bolt Beak goes into it. And then we just parting shot out, get nine tails in, get the hail up, and bye bye Urshifu. Even if you've got a sash, you're not getting through this turn, and then you lose your way uh, to set up that that pesky colossal that we don't like to see. Okay, well there's the sash. This works out perfectly. Okay. 
<laughs> it's not over though it's not over by any means you know because the colossal is still such a threat to us um even if it's like parting shot minus one the residual damage um at least it can't have that instant setup with the steam engine which is which makes things a little bit easier for us for sure um get the nine tails in we need to okay and that that will deal that will deal with that urshifu the snow warning comes up which is nice because now we can get our raw veil up the next turn we've got our slush rush ability active uh we're sitting in a pretty nice spot to be honest we could go blizzard we could go aurora veil uh with nine tails this next turn but i think we definitely go for a max quake into that colossal whatever we do um be interesting is the aleki going to come in here yep gonna try and get some damage onto the um the nine tails i think yeah we max quake into the colossal and we'll go for an aurora veil because it's going to be useful i think just the just to have that additional um defense going going forward obviously the electric trains up but nine tails not mega worried at this point because we've got the sash so we've got that little bit of security we can kind of fall back on here um and the colossal gonna gonna go for that g max of course it is my opponent's in a, in a, a super awkward corner here so they're gonna throw the rocks out so we need the raw reveal up really because we'll probably proc the weakness policy well we're gonna proc the weakness policy i don't know if we're going to be able to pick up the knockout though that's the big thing for us so Aleki going back last three are coming in at least we're not intimidated and we don't have to worry about the uh the old um incineral popping its head up and uh, ruining our ruining all our fun so we do get some nice big fat damage into that colossal we get another special defense boost which is again going to help us out a bunch um we do activate the weakness policy but thankfully no steam engine active and uh, we should be able to get the aurora veil up yeah before they can attack and we're going to be faster than pretty much well everything on my opponent side of the field going into this next turn it's a gmax flare okay <sighs> well we're still going to be faster um because they haven't got their they haven't got their uh the, their steam engine i should why why is my brain so slow today i don't know what it is like i've been um this last week i've been away at my parents for the first time in a long time so it's been really nice um and i've done nothing for the whole week no pokemon no like I was, i've been barely on social media which feels really strange so spent like the last day and a half catching up trying to catch up with everything uh and obviously had to prioritize getting a content out for you guys today it is a bit late i appreciate that um well, there's not really i mean we just stomp in tantrum there's not really much my opponent can do now and i mean we just fake out as well just uh, the, the the big key in this match was getting rid of the Urshifu like we did, you know. The Urshifu coming in, uh, us covering bases with that bold beak, it really just made it very difficult for my opponent to kind of get any momentum from there. And I think, you know, if the, the Urshifu comes in a little bit later or at a different point, the match could be totally different because you know how, like, devastating Colossal can be. Yeah, we're going to see the max guard. It makes a lot of sense. I want to just try and get through this turn. Um, it will double the power of our Stomp and Tantrum, I believe. I think, well, normally if you hit into Protect. I don't know if it works into max guard. Um, but, I mean, we're in a great spot here just to go for the Stomp and Tantrum and just the Flare Blitz. Especially boosted by the Sun, we should be able to get the Glastria in one hit. If the, the Aleki decides to pop in, then we'll get that. Um... Stomp and Tantrum going to pick up the knockout onto the Colossal. Yeah, and just not really allow it to get get set up or do anything. And uh, I think, you know, the, the games that we've had today, like, Ogdazolt's done amazingly well. Like, I don't think I could have wished for two better games for uh, to feature it in. Honestly, it's um, it's been an amazing Pokemon. We are going to be left with the Regieleki. The Electric Terrain is up on the field. Uh, Incineroar now going to be threatened by that. Uh, but... Uh, shivering, quaking, good old Octavish 
is going to be able to close this one out for us pretty pretty easily. So we'll go for the stomping. Uh, we'll go for... Oh, we don't even need to bother parting shot. We'll just go for a flare blitz. Incinero is probably going to go down here unless they go after the Octazolt. But we just see the battle cancel it. And uh, very good game to my opponent. Like I say, there was one key moment with the, the getting rid of the Urshifu there. And I think as well not seeing Incinero in that match made it a lot easier for us to, uh, to kind of get going with Octavish because I uh, Octazolt because I think with Intimidate kind of cycling it makes it very difficult to kind of keep up the momentum with the uh the, the attack power that you need. It's not the strongest of Pokemon. Obviously he needs the life orb to boost it there, but it worked out in the end and we had two really good games. So we'll jump over now and get you all the rental code for today's team. Okay, friends, here is today's rental code. And if you do try it out, I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Octazol is definitely a very fun Pokemon, very unique type Pokemon as well, you know. So I would definitely give it a shot if you've got time and you're interested. And I think Ice is always going to be a very cool type to uh, kind of an archetype to kind of play around with as well. It's a shame we didn't really get to see too much of the Dragapult today or the Stack Attacker, but we kind of got to see the main element of the team that it was built around initially, which was the Octazolt. And you can see how well it kind of performed in these two matches, which was amazing. Like I've said, it couldn't really ask for two better games to kind of feature and showcase Octazolt in. So hopefully it's enough for you guys that have watched it to have a little bit of inspiration or just feel the need to go and try it. Because if you do, as always, please leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the build, if you've been playing around with it already or if you plan to or if it's helped inspire any ideas for your own team builds because that's the big thing i hope you're still all enjoying series nine at the minute we're kind of getting really underway with it there's lots of tournaments going on all the time um, and just in other news we've started a draft league over on our discord uh, server so we'll be featuring matches from that in the coming week over well probably this week later this week into next week with the uh, the first and second rounds from them because we've got a lot of the content uh, being recorded from our players which is great so we'll be able to do that um, as well as our, our main kind of VG stuff as well and uh, I'll be starting streaming so keep an eye out on my socials Twitter um, here on YouTube I'll post out when I am going to be doing some streaming, which will be very soon. So, as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're all keeping well, and make sure you do take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So, until then, friends, take care of yourselves, and bye-bye.